took my GED, I passed it the first time. I'm smart enough to take college courses. But in my world, these kind of men aren't great. I want to go home and be respected. I want to go home and I want to be a man. So I set out to get that badge of honor right of uh, being a gangster. Uh, by the time I was 16 years old in, in the lockup facility, uh, one of the older guys who, was, who, 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 who initiated me into the game had, had left me to call shots over the game. So I was shot calling by the time I was 16 in the facility. I could snap my fingers and start a riot. Uh, and I was getting locked up every other week, every other day seems like. I spent nine months in a 23-hour lockdown uh, behavior modification program. Uh, I, and I was on multiple 28, 24-hour lockdown for 30 days. Uh, and really psychologically, man, uh, I was working to, to become institutionalized uh, and not knowing it. There was four individuals uh, who, who worked on my dorm, who was able to see past this, 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 this heart facade, this bullshit heart facade that I was putting on. I was just acting, right? Uh, and they was able to see the potential. And, and based on the things that they saw, uh, they put their jobs on the line to, to come back to testify before my judge, uh, to say, young, this kid, I know what he looked like on paper. But we've been working with him for four years. He's been on our dorm for four years. Uh, this kid got potential to be somebody. They said, well, how do you know? Uh, well, look at his negative leadership. If you can get all these kids to do this negatively, and we have more time to work with him, we think he, he'll, be, he'll be a better influence. There's a kid by the name of Ethan Couch. Some people know about him, some people don't. A white kid. He killed four people in a DWI accident in Texas. And he got 10 years probation. And his family was a millionaire family, real rich family. And his lawyer used this defense called the affluenza defense. That he was too rich to know right from wrong. White judge, white kid, white county, they swerve down that the only reason that judge gave this kid 10 years probation because she was white and he was white. Kid's name is Ethan Couch. The judge's name is Judge Gene Boyd. So when I do public speaking, especially when I'm doing uh, with law enforcement at the university, of, at the university, I say, how many of you guys believe that Ethan Cashin went to prison? Well, everybody in the room hands shoot him. And I say, I disagree. And boy, you didn't see the room. And I say, well, in Judge Jean Boyd's defense, she should have sent me to prison. Because if you would have asked everybody back then, how many of y'all believe Charles and she went to prison? That whole facility would have raised their hand and everybody was wrong. Maybe Judge Jean Boyd saw something in that kid that she saw in me that nobody else could see. Maybe she saw something in him exactly in what she saw in me to prove everybody wrong. That's why she gave him a chance and she gave me a chance because she should have sent me to prison. I was working hard to go. Man, I was working hard to go. I had my brother, my oldest brother, 17 years old, received a 99 year prison sentence for a murder he committed. When we was, I was nine years old. We were watching television. My brother, all of a sudden said, man, when I grow up, I'm gonna kill somebody. Man, I looked at that nigga and ran down, mama! Mama Kevin said, Negro, we gonna kill somebody. She said, what? Boy, come here. Boy, she whooped his ass. Rather than whooping him, she should have been trying to examine where that anger comes from. Because when he grew up, he killed somebody. My brother was always angry from the simple fact that our dads weren't there. He was naturally angry from the simple fact that dad wasn't there. When he grew up, he killed somebody. My brother just made parole after 31 years, from 17 years old, from a crime he committed. 25 of those years, my brother had no remorse for the person he killed. I used to tell him, man, God ain't gonna never let you out of prison if you don't at least have remorse for his mom. 
He felt like he was justified. I said, God ain't gonna never let you out of prison. She ain't got these for his mama. Because that's what our mama been preaching, is to have remorse for what you done done wrong. So, I share that to say this. Man, sometimes God like playing in the dirt, Judge. Sometimes a, a lot of these kids, they wrong is their way out. So they can begin to start doing right in life. It may be a 20 year sentence. It may be 10 years. But a lot of times they wrong is their only way out. So they can find this new way to live their life. Because a lot of times, they don't know they're doing wrong. Their mama and them do it. Their dad's in agreement with it. The neighbor's in agreement with it. So that's why this room ain't feel. They don't know they're doing wrong. Our village, and, and, and this ain't about black and white. This is about us. Because our culture is the only culture that's destroying us. Rap culture don't destroy white kids. It don't destroy Hispanic kids. We're the only ones living out the lyrics. And we're sitting back as, 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 we're sitting back as black people in silence. We're muted. And we're not opposing what's destroying us. Only time we get mad if one of them shoot us. And we're only mad for a minute. Then we go back to shooting us. So, after working in the community, doing community work, youth advocacy, youth engagement, uh, creating anti-game cognitive intervention programs, or uh, street life cycles, uh, motivational speaking. Uh, man, after doing all this, uh, I got frustrated. And, and, and I came to the internet to be mean, uh, I came to the internet to be just as disrespectful, uh, but I came to be just as impactful as a rapper in his lyrics. With the same tools, the same language, the same words, the same bravadoness, the same look, uh, I'm matching fire with fire, uh, and, and I'm unapologetic about it. What we see now today is we see more kids dying and more kids killing than we've ever seen throughout the 90s. Yeah. Than we've ever seen throughout the 90s. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I became the change that I wanted to see. So this is what y'all see, uh, the change that I wanted to become. Uh, I wanted to be a rapper, but without rapping. Uh, and be just as effective, uh, but changing the narrative, right? Uh, I can't rap, uh, but I can talk, or I can, I can communicate without, without a beat. And, and, and create new narratives. Uh, I call the police. Uh, our community teachers don't call the police. Well, there's a lot of little girls in our community that's getting raped, violated, molested because she think that's snitching, so she don't say nothing. There's, there, there, there are molesters who whisper in these kids' ears, you better not snitch on me. And because that word snitch holds such captive in our communities, they hold in the abuse. And then they just show it in the action. By that time, it's too late. So I'm trying to peel back all the negative layers uh, that's preventing us from becoming better people. I really don't care too much about grown adults making wrong choices and decisions. Uh, I care about children making wrong choices and decisions. Uh, so that's what I aim at. I think standing up talking, I'm wasting my time. I think most of us should be talking like this to keep and we'll get a better future. So uh, with that being said, I'm open up for questions, but I'm all for you. Good job, bro.